Hello, what's up everybody? My name is Carlos Betraga Pinzon, RTRVI. Welcome back to my channel, Lazy Bones Radiology. In today's episode, I'll be covering the fingers of the hand. But before we start, don't forget to press that like button and subscribe to the channel, and share with your friends so we can all learn together. Let's begin! The Anatomical Position This is when a patient stands erect with the face and eyes facing forward, arms are extended, hands are facing forward, heels are together, and the toes are pointed forward. Also known as the neutral position, do not forget it. The following definitions were gathered from Merrill's Atlas of Radiographic Positioning and Procedures. This is a series that I used when I was a student, so I highly recommend it. In the medical field, fingers are known as digits, as you can see here in my model. But before we jump into the positioning, we have to first review the anatomy of the fingers, or the digits. The digits are numerically numbered 1 through 5 starting from lateral to medial. It is very important not to confuse the order in which the digits are named. Let's start. The thumb is the first digit. The index finger is the second digit. The middle finger is the third. Ring finger is the fourth. And the pinky finger is the fifth. Now let's break them down. There are 14 phalanxes in the hand. Let's start with the first digit. In the first digit, as you can see here, there is two phalanx, the distal and the proximal phalanx. And in between those two, there is specific joints. As we can see here, this is the interphalangeal joint, also known as the IP joint. And right here, we can see that this is the metacarpal. So in between those, it is known as the metacarpal phalangeal joint, or the MCP joint. Next is the carpal metacarpal joint, which is where the metacarpal and the carpal bones articulate. Joints are named by the bones that are being articulated with, so if you're ever having a brain fart, just remember your anatomy. Second through fifth digits. The second through fifth digits have three phalanxes, unlike the first digit. There is the distal, middle, and proximal phalanx. Within each phalanx, there is a specific joint that you must know. The distal interphalangeal joint, or the dip joint, the proximal interphalangeal joint, or the pip joint. Next is your metacarpals, and in between them is the metacarpal phalangeal joints, or the MCP joints. Remember, joints are named by the bones that are being articulated. Remember your anatomy if you're having a difficult time remembering them. Please make sure that you review and be knowledgeable with the anatomy, because knowing the anatomy is very important for the positioning part. Let's start with the PA projection of the second through fifth digits. The position of the patient is seated. The position of the part is when the hand is placed palmar side down and the fingers are extended. As you can see here, the central ray is perpendicular to the pip joint of the digit of interest, as you can see here. Collimation or the field of interest is the entire digit including the distal part of the metacarpal bone. As you can see here on the right hand side, we are interested in the second digit, so we are centered in the pip joint of the second digit. Remember the SID is 40 inches, and don't forget to label correctly. Let's practice. As you can see here, this is an x-ray of the second digit. So what are we imaging? The second digit. What is a projection? This is a PA projection. What is the position of the part? The digit is pronated. Now let's practice some anatomy. This is the distal phalanx, middle phalanx, proximal phalanx, in between the distal and the middle phalanx is the dip joint, also known as the distal interphalangeal joint. Next, the pip joint. Next is the metacarpal, or the second metacarpal. And in between is the metacarpal phalangeal joint. Lateral projections of the second through fifth digits. This is when a patient is seated. Position of the part is when the hand is placed lateral with the digit of interest extended while the other digits are flexed or folded in the hand. As you can see here, the central ray is perpendicular to the pip joint of the digit of interest. Make sure to collimate the entire finger of interest in the field of view, including the distal part of the metacarpal. SID is 40, and remember to label correctly. Here's an example of a lateral digit, so let's practice. What are we imaging? As you can see here, this is the third digit. What is the projection? This is a lateral medial projection. So the medial side of the hand is touching the IR and the central ray is passing from lateral to medial. 
What is the position? The digit is lateral. Now let's practice the anatomy. This is the distal phalanx, middle phalanx, proximal phalanx. Now let's work on the joints. The dip joint and the pip joint. Remember, we're talking about the third digit. So it'll be the dip joint of the third digit and the pip joint of the third digit. But for time's sake, we can just call it the pip and dip. Next is your metacarpal, and in between those, the metacarpal phalangeal joints. PA projections, lateral rotation of the second through fifth digits. The patient is seated, and the position is when the hand is placed at a 45 degree angle with lateral rotation with the digits of interest extended while the other digits are separated away, as you can see here on my right hand side. The central ray is perpendicular to the pip joint of the digit of interest. For example, here on my right hand side, the second digit is the digit of interest. Make sure to collimate the entire finger of interest in the field, including the distal part of the metacarpal. SID is at 40, and remember to label correctly. Now let's practice. What digit are we imaging? The second digit. What is the projection? This is a PA oblique projection. What is the position of the part? Digit is pronated with lateral rotation. Remember, it's at a 45 degree angle. Now let's practice the anatomy again. I know it's becoming repetitive, but it's very important that you know your anatomy. Distal, middle, proximal phalanxes. Next is your dip joint, pip joint, metacarpal, metacarpal phalangeal joint, or MCP joint. Very important that you understand the anatomy. Next is the AP projection of the first digit. This is when the patient is seated down, and the position of the part is when the dorsal surface of the first digit is against the image receptor. This is achieved by medial rotation of the hand. Central A is perpendicular to the MCP joint of the first digit. Make sure to collimate the entire first digit in the field of view, including the distal part of the metacarpal. SID is at 40. Remember to label correctly. Let's practice. What digit are we imaging? This is the first digit. What is the projection? This is an AP projection. What is the position of the part? The first digit's posterior surface is parallel with the IR and abducted. Now let's practice the anatomy. Distal and proximal phalanxes. Remember, the first digit only has two, while the second through fifth have three. Now, what is this joint? This is the interphalangeal joint, or the IP joint, of the first digit. Next is your metacarpal, or your first metacarpal. And in between, is the metacarpal phalangeal joint of the first digit. Lastly, the carpal metacarpal joint. And for a fun fact, as you can see here, this is an artifact. Next is the PA projection of the first digit. This is when the patient is seated down. Position of the part, this is when the hand is partially lateral with the position of the first digit extended and the dorsal surface is parallel with the image receptor, as you can see here on the right hand side. The digit is elevated, so it's important that the digit is parallel with the IR. Central ray is perpendicular to the MCP joint, as you can see here. Remember to collimate the entire digit of interest, including the distal part of the metacarpal bone. SID is 40, and remember to label correctly. Let's practice. What are we imaging? This is the first digit. What is the projection? This is a PA projection. What is the position? The first digit is parallel with the IR and is abducted from the rest of the hand. Now let's practice your anatomy again. Distal phalanx, proximal phalanx, interphalangeal joint, metacarpal, metacarpal phalangeal joint, and the carpal metacarpal joint. Next is the PA oblique projection of the first digit. This is when the patient is seated, and the position of, is when the the hand is pronated or palm side down with the first digit extended. The central ray is perpendicular to the MCP joint, as you can see here. When you place your hand down, the thumb is naturally in an oblique position. Collimation includes the entire digit, including the distal part of the metacarpal. SID is 40 inches. Remember to label correctly. Let's practice. What digit are we imaging? The first digit. What is the projection? This is a PA oblique projection. What is the position? Hand is pronated and thumb is neutral. 
Now let's work with your anatomy. Distal phalanx, proximal phalanx, IP joint, metacarpal, metacarpal phalangeal joint, and carpal metacarpal joint. Lateral projection of the first digit. This is when the patient is seated. Position of the part is the hand is placed with palmar side down, immediately rotated until the first digit is at a true lateral position, as you can see here on the right hand side. Central ray is perpendicular to the MCP joint. Make sure to collimate the entire finger, including the distal part of the metacarpal. SID is 40 inches. Remember to label correctly. Let's practice. What digit are we imaging? The first digit. What is the projection? Medial lateral projection. What is the position? The hand is medially rotated until the lateral surface of the first digit is against the IR or in a lateral position. Now let's practice your anatomy. Distal phalanx, proximal phalanx, interphalangeal joint, metacarpal, metacarpal phalangeal joint, carpal metacarpal joint. I know it's repetitive, but it's very important that you understand the anatomy when you're looking at an image. Please make sure that you review and be knowledgeable with all the positions. The next section is going to be special projections and methods. First, carpal metacarpal joint, AP projection, the robber method. Patient is seated with the arm extended with the hand medially rotated until the dorsal surface of the first digit is parallel with the IR. Make sure to hyperextend the hand to move the soft tissue from obstructing the CMC joint, as you can see here on my diagram that I drew. Centroid is perpendicular to the CMC joint of the first digit. As you can see here, make sure to collimate the entire finger, including the carpal bones. SID is 40. Remember to label correctly. Let's practice. This is an AP projection of the thumb. Well, this is the Robert method. Do you see the difference? As you can see here on the left hand side, the soft tissue is obstructing the CMC joint. While on the Robert method, the carpal metacarpal joint is able to be seen. Let's practice. What digit are we imaging? The first digit. What is the projection? AP projection. What is the position? Hand is immediately rotated until the posterior surface of the first digit is against the IR. Now let's practice the anatomy. Distal phalanx, proximal phalanx, interphalangeal or IP joint, first metacarpal, first metacarpal phalangeal joint. Next, the long referred modification. This is when the patient is seated, as you can see here. Position of the part is when the arm is extended with the hand medially rotated until the dorsal surface of the first digit is parallel with the IR, like the robber method. This is just a modification to this method. Like before, hyperextend the hand to move the soft tissue away from the CMC joint of the first digit. But this time, the central ray is at a 15 degree cephalic angle entering at the CMC joint. Make sure to include the entire finger, including the carpal bones. SID is 40, and remember to label correctly. The next is the Lewis modification. Same positioning. Arms extended with the hand medially rotated until the dorsal surface of the first digit is parallel with the IR. Make sure to hyperextend in order to move the soft tissue. But this time, the central ray is at a 10 to 15 degree cephalic angle entering at the metacarpal phalangeal joint. Unlike the first two that was at the carpal metacarpal joint, this is at the metacarpal phalangeal joint. Very important not to confuse the two modifications. Same collimation. SID is the same. Remember to label correctly. Effectively, the modifications are in order to see the same carpal metacarpal joint but as you know, everybody's anatomy is different. So different modifications for the robber method is needed in order to open the CMC joint of the first digit. Next is the Berman method. As you can see here, the patient is seated. Position of the part is where the arm is extended with the hand hyperextended and internally rotated until the lateral side of the first digit is against the IR. As you can see here in my diagram that I drew, the central ray is at a 45 degree cephalic angle entering at the CMC joint. 
or the carpal metacarpal joint of the first digit. It is recommended the SID for this position is 18 inches to magnify the joint space. Remember to collimate the entire first metacarpal in the inferior aspect of the hand in order to include the CMC joint and the entire trapezium bone. And remember to label correctly. Here's an example, as we can see here. Central ray is at the CMC joint, and this is the example of the Berman method. So, what are we looking at? This is the first digit. What is the projection? This is an AP axial projection. What is the position? The hand is immediately rotated until the lateral surface is against the IR, and also the hand is hyperextended. Now let's practice your anatomy. As you can see here, this is the proximal phalanx. Next is the metacarpal. Next is your metacarpal phalangeal joint of the first digit. And as you can see here, the open carpal metacarpal joint due to the Berman method. And lastly, the trapezium bone. The last position for the thumb, the folio method. This is where the patient is seated and the position of the hands are placed with the palmer side down with a roll of tape between the hands. Lateral rotation until both of the first digits are parallel with the IR. A rubber band is wrapped around the first digits, pulling them together. Next, before the exposure, tell the patient to adduct both digits and the rubber band will cause tension between the digits, as you can see here. This projection is used to diagnose ulnar collateral ligament, or UCL, rupture in the MCP joint, also known as skier thumb. Central is perpendicular to both hands at the MCP joint level, as you can see here on the right hand side. Here's a different view. Make sure to collimate the entire digits in the field of view, including the carpal bones. SIDs at 40, SIDs 40 inches, and remember to label correctly. Here's examples of a normal MCP joint. There's not much difference between the medial lines of the metacarpal and the phalanges while an abnormal MCP joint, as you can see here on the right hand side, there's a significant difference between the left and right thumb. There's a 20 degree difference between the medial line of the metacarpal and the phalange on the left hand, while on the right hand side is only a seven degree difference. This is the condition known as skier thumb. As you can see here, not much difference between both hands, while on the right hand picture, there's a major difference between the metacarpal phalangeal joints. Remember to review your anatomy. It is very important to understand the anatomy in order for you to be successful in the positioning. Central ray and positioning come hand in hand, but if you do not understand what you're looking for or what you're looking at, you're gonna have a difficult time positioning. The special methods and the special views are good to learn, but that is after you have learned the basics. So I advise that you understand the positioning of the first common views in order for you to jump into the different methods. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and learned a lot. Remember to practice, practice, practice. And don't forget to press that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share with your friends so we can all learn together. Also, you can follow me on Instagram at lazybones underscore radiology. Thank you very much. Have a great day. And remember to practice.